Hi judges, welcome to another segment of One Ardiwag Memorial High School Senior High School Math TV. And for today's video lesson, we will tackle about geometric sequence. So, what do you think is the difference between an arithmetic sequence and geometric sequence? Very good. For arithmetic sequence, we have what we call as the common difference. It is the term being added so that we could get the preceding term. But for the geometric sequence, we will not anymore be calling this as the common difference, but we will be calling this as the common ratio. And the common ratio is the term being multiplied so that we could get the next term. So when we say geometric sequence, we have a sequence in which each term after the first is obtained by multiplying the preceding term by a constant. And that constant is what we call as the common ratio. So just like the arithmetic sequence, we have the formula in which we could get the term position. And the formula would be uh, a n is equal to a1 times r raised to n minus 1, where a1 is the first term, r is the common ratio, and n is the number of terms. And also, a n is the n term. So it is the one that we need to find. So again, the formula for the geometric sequence is a n is equal to a1 times r raised to n minus 1. And if we're asked to get the associated series or the sum of the terms of the geometric sequence, the formula is very simple. The formula is just Sn denoted by S or the N is the number of terms. If we have 32 terms, therefore that is S32. So if we're asked to get the associated series or sum of the terms, the formula is Sn is equal to A1 times 1 minus R raised to N all over 1 minus R where r should not be equal to 1 because the denominator will be 0 and in that case it becomes undefined. So again, the formula for the associated series or sum of the terms is Sn is equal to A1 times 1 minus r raised to n over 1 minus r where r should not be equal to 1. Okay, so when we are getting the common difference in arithmetic sequence, we just subtract the second term to the first term or the third term to the second term. If the term is increasing, therefore the common difference is positive. While if the term is decreasing, therefore the common difference is negative. So it's the same be applied to geometric sequence. So let us try. So I have here first the activity in which we need to get the common ratio so that we would know if it becomes positive or it becomes negative. So again, the sign will always be dependent on the sequence or the terms in the sequence. So let us try the first one. So we need to get the common ratio. For the first one, we are given 1, 5, 25, 125, 625. So how do we find the common ratio? So it is very simple. You just need to get the second term, which is 5, and then the first term, which is 1. So you need to divide. Okay, so let us try to check if it is the same with the other. Okay, so we have the third one, which is 25 over 5. And we have the fourth one, which is 125 over 25. When we say 125 over 25, 25 over 5, 5 over 1, therefore the common ratio for that one is just 5. I hope that is clear. So that is how we get the common ratio. So let, let us continue for the others. 8 divided by 4, we also have 16 divided by 8, 32 divided by 16, and 64 divided by 32. It all boils down to the common ratio, which is equal to 2. 8 over 4, 16 over 8, 32 over 16. For the second one, so it, it now contains, contains um, opposite signs. So alternating signs, therefore, we'll be getting negative 12 over 6, 24 over negative 12, negative 48 over 24. Therefore, R is very simple. That is negative 12 over 6, 24 over negative 12. Therefore, the answer should be negative 2. And for the last one, we're given 1 over negative 3, negative 1 third over 1. And 
1 over 9 divided by negative 1 third. Therefore, r is just negative 1 over 3. So this is how we get or how we solve for the common ratio. And it is very simple. All you have to do is to get, so the formula is just a2 over a1, which is also equal to a3 over a2, which is also equal to a4 over a3, and so on and so forth. So that is how we solve for the common ratio. Again, I hope that this is clear with you guys because in order for us to proceed with the solving part of the geometric sequence, you need to learn the basic, which is getting the common ratio. Okay, so I guess that um, you now know how to solve for the common ratio. Let us now move on to solving the different terms in a geometric sequence. So let's have the example number one. What is the eighth term of the geometric six sequence? That is 1, 5, 25, 125, 625, and the same as our first example. And we're asked to get the eighth term. Term. So if we're asked to get the 8th term, let us try to write first the given. We are given A1, which is 1. We are given R. What is the common ratio for this one? We are already given common ratio. 5 over 1, 25 over 5. Therefore, it is equal to 5. That is the common ratio. And how many number of terms? We call that N. We're asked to look for the 8th term. Therefore, N is equal to 8. And we're asked to get a n. So what is that a n? So let us write the formula. The formula is a n, this one, is equal to a1 times r raised to n minus 1. Where a n is missing or unknown, where a1 is the first term, which is 1, multiply it to r, which is 5, and raise that to n minus 1, that becomes 8 minus 1. Therefore, a n is equal to 1 times 5, 8 minus 1 is 7. Therefore, this is just 1. Therefore, 5 raised to 7 is very simple. That is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So, you multiply 5 by itself 7 times. Therefore, it is now equal to 78,125. And that is our AN. And our AN is A8. Again, our AN is A8. So... That is the 8th term. The 8th term now is 78,125. 78, so let us try. This is 1. This is the first term. Second term. Third. Fourth term. Fifth term. So let us try to check. So in order for us to get the 6th term, therefore that is 625 times 5, and we will be getting 3,125. 3, this is the 6th term. And for the seventh term, all we have to do is to multiply this again by 5 and we'll be getting 15,675. And for the eighth term, you just multiply this by 5 so that we need to check and we'll be getting 78,125 and we'll be getting the same answer. So in order for you to lessen this process, so we have this formula. Okay, so for the second one, what is the 10th term of the geometric sequence 4, 8, 16, 32, 64? Again, it is just the same as this part. And we need to write the given. We are given A1. A1, which is 4. And then we are given R. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 16 divided by 8 is 2, just like this one. Therefore, R is equal to 2. N is this one, the 10th term. Therefore, N is equal to 10. And we're asked to get A10. Okay? Again, write the formula. The formula is a n is equal to a1 times r raised to n minus 1, where a n is a10, where a1 is 4, that is the first term, where r is equal to 2, time, raise it to n minus 1, which is 10 minus 1. Okay, so this should be 10 minus 1. 10 minus 1. Therefore, a10 now is equal to 4 times 2 raised to 9. Therefore, a10 is equal to 4 times 2 raised to 9 will give us an answer of 512 and 4 times 512 will be 20,000 2,000
48. So that is 2048. And this is the 10th term. The 10th term of the geometric sequence now is 2048. So let us try to check. This is the first term, second, third, fourth, fifth. And for the 6, we just multiply this by the common ratio, which is 2. Therefore, 64 times 2 is 128. This is the 6th term. 128 times 2 is 256. 256 times 2 is 512. That is the 8th term. For the ninth term, this becomes 512 times 2 will give us an answer of 1,024. And for the 10th term, we just multiply this by 2, and that becomes 2,048. And it is the same as the... A10. Okay, so this is the long method that you need to multiply it one by one. But for the shorter method, you just use the formula for geometric sequence. Okay, and for the third example, what is the sum of the 10 terms in number 2? So we're asked to get the sum. Okay, if we're asked to get the sum, let us just write again the given. Therefore, we will be using this given. A1 is equal to 4. R is equal to 2 n is equal to 10, and then we could say that a10 is equal to 2048. Okay, if that is the case, we need to um, add. Okay, so, but the formula will be different. Therefore, we are using the formula sn is equal to a1 times 1 minus r raised to n over 1 minus r. Okay, is r equal to 1? No. Therefore, we could use this formula. Therefore, substituting the given to the formula will be getting 4 times 1 minus r raised to n, that is 2 raised to 10, okay, over 1 minus 2. And this becomes 4 times 1 minus 2 raised to 10 is 1024. 2 raised to 10 is 1024 over 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Okay, so... Let's continue solving. 4 times 1 minus 1,024 is negative 1,023 over negative 1. 4 times negative 1,023 will give us an answer of negative 4,092. Okay, that is negative 4,092 over negative 1. And 4,092, negative 4,092 over negative 1 will give us an answer of positive 4,092. And this is now S. 10. Therefore, this is the sum of the 10 terms in the geometric sequence. So if we will be adding 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128 plus 256 plus 112, 512 plus 1024 and plus 2048, all that we will be getting will just be 4092. Again, so... Um, if we do not want any more to add, therefore, we will be using this formula, the shorter version of the process. Okay, so that is how you solve for the sum of the terms or the associated series. So let us now try to have a problem solving or a critical thinking question. So for the critical thinking question, we are given this one. Evaluate the following sum. 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus up to 512 but we do not know yet these terms what are the terms in this inside this um, values but we all know that the last term is 512 okay we could say that a n is equal to 512 but we do not know the value of n yet again we do not know the value of any n yet Okay, so if a n is equal to 512, therefore we could say that a1 is equal to 1. And that r is equal to 2 divided by 1, which is 2. 4 divided by 2, which is 2. 8 divided by 4, which is 2. Therefore, r is equal to 2. Using the formula, a n is equal to a1 times r raised to n minus 1, we could say that a n is 512. Is now equal to a1, which is 1, times r, which is 2, raised to n minus 1. Okay, since this is just 1, we could now omit 1. Therefore, 512 is just equal to 2 raised to n minus 1. Since we have here a base 2, therefore, we need to express 512 with base 2. And if we, read it, and if we would like to express 512 having its base equal to 2, therefore, we could say that this is just 2 raised to what? That is just 2 raised to 9. To 9. Okay, so that is just 2 raised to 9. That is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 
Okay? Therefore, if that is just 2 raised to 9, we'll be having 2 raised to 9 is equal to 2 raised to n minus 1. Now, they have the same base. And always remember that if the equations have the same base, all we have to do is to, yes, to cancel out their bases. Therefore, 9 is equal to n minus 1. Transfer this out to the left side. Therefore, we'll be having 1 plus 9, and that is n. Therefore, 10 is equal to n. And the number of terms now would be 10. Okay, therefore, there are 10 terms for this series for this geometric series okay if there are turn terms for that geometric series we now get the sum okay because this is plus so we now get the sum therefore that is sn is equal to a1 times 1 minus r raised to n over 1 minus r sn that becomes s10 is now equal to a1 our a1 is 1 times 1 minus r our r is 2 raised to n which is 10 over 1 minus r that is 1 minus 2 therefore s10 now is equal to 1 times 1 minus 2 raised to 10 will give us an answer of 1024 okay so that is 2 raised to 10 1024 over 1 minus 2 1 minus 2 is negative 1 and our S10 should be negative 1,023 over negative 1. Therefore, the sum of the terms would be 1,023. Okay, so that is how we solve and to solve for this geometric series. And we get its sum. So again, that is how we solve for geometric sequence and series. So we have the formula a n is equal to a1 times r raised to n minus 1. And for the associated series or the sum of the terms, we'll be using the formula s n is equal to a1 times the quantity 1 minus r raised to n all over 1 minus r, where r should not be equal to 1. So that is very simple. I hope you learned something from this video lesson. Once again, I am engineer Jod Edward Hernandez saying that mathematics is always fun. Goodbye and God bless.